and welcome back to another one of Lee's R&D sessions where he's uh, taking a look at putting together some procedurally generated terrain just for, for numerous things that we're interested in doing, but we just need kind of a proof of concept working. In this video, we're going to keep it very short because Lee's got to leave out to catch a plane here in just a few minutes, but uh, Lee is going to just just show that we can easily create multiple patches now. We're not going to worry about seaming anything. Right. So, um, of course, since we are randomly generating the, the terrain patches, uh, well, it depends on how you want to, to handle the height, but the, the bottom line is it's not going to be seamed right now on all of the edges, but that's okay. I mean, for just a quick proof of concept that with what you've got, very little code, we can do multiple patches, then later on, we, once you're back uh, home, we can get into some interesting stuff like getting everything stitched together. We could start taking a look at perhaps having another thread that's running. And as we're running through the world, generating patches that we need on the fly that are outside of what we can see, but then they're there. Right. So we don't have you know an entire world brought in. Just different things to play with for proof of concepts. So yeah, let's go ahead and toss this together quickly. All right, what I'm going to do is create another constant. This is going to be integer and I'm going to call this patch count and to start with mm, let's start with three okay so now right here we don't really have a, a mechanism for offsetting a whole lot of stuff and we want to be able to slide our and arrange our tiles yes. as tiles next to each other. So we need to address that. So we're going to come back over to terrain patch and we're going to need to store a position for our patches. So let's make a property. So this is going to be public and or actually let's start off with private vector 3 this will be position. Now I'm going to make the public accessor or set of getters for this. Vector 3, position. So now to get, what I'm going to do is return. Let's see, how do I want to do that? And I don't have it on that one. I'm trying to find my notes. They're all over the place. So, give me a sec. Where do we move all that stuff? So, that stuff's going to be moved over into our projects. There we go. Yeah, there's one little tricky part to this because we're offsetting. We need to deal with size and stuff mm -hmm. and our spacing. So I just want to make sure I do that right so I don't do a bunch of trial and error with the... Uh, Yikes. Well, this will be fun. Yeah. Don't double click. No. But it's fine. Uh, go so ahead and hit cancel on that. All right. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. All right. What we're going to do... Now you're going to sit there. He needed his notes for this. <laughs> so... Return position, obviously. Our setter is a little bit different, though. Now, what we have to do is we have to take in consideration our size and our spacing. So what we're going to do is we're going to set position equal to a new vector 3. And we need to take our values x component, multiply that by size minus one because we have to compensate for vertices to faces then multiply that by our spacing we're not going to do any adjustments to our y value and our z is going to be the same as our x so that will return that. Now what we need here is we need to take in a, a way to offset our tile or our patches. So we're going to check for a vector 2 and this will be a, oh actually let's do vector 3, I'll save me time. 
And what I'll do from here is after size and spacing is brought in, I'm going to set position equal to POS. So what's going to happen is it's going to come in with a tile um, count. Mm -hmm. So like 0, 1, 2. And it's going to figure out the size and the spacing and offset our trains by that. Okay. So the other part is after we've created our mesh, so we create our grid, create our mesh, we need to offset our mesh. So what we'll do is we'll take our mesh object take its, well actually we do that in another part of code already, so why not just set it there, I, I believe. Let me see about this. So mesh object, create new mesh object, might as well just set it here. Mm -hmm. Keep all the mesh object stuff together. Take its transform, its position, and we're going to set it equal to position. And I can use the little position for that because that's what will be saved. So that should offset our positions. Now what we need to do is come back in the tech demo and here now this is no longer valid but we want to march through a cascaded array. So we'll start off with Z. Z is going to be less than our patch count. And then X, again, patch count. Then we're going to take this, put this in the inner bra braces, and then we're going to pass in a new vector 3, X, comma, 0, comma, Z, comma. That makes that happy. Let's clean up some of these because we don't need them. And I don't need that one either. Right. So if I go ahead and do that, that probably is everything I need, but I reserve uh, the right to have screwed up and go well, back and fix it. We're also rushing. This is just a little extra in the proof of concept. Well, it's doing more calculations because it's longer, taking longer to drop in for the first time. So no errors yet. How many did you? Uh, just three. Just okay. So it's doing nine tiles total. Or it should be. Should be. It's a lot longer than um, I've seen it in was. The past. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering too. And it looks like I may have crashed Unity. Well, while that's crashed out, let's go ahead and um, pause and. Yeah, go ahead and. Wait, oh, no. Oh, 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 you hit stop. Uh, all right. How dense is your um, mesh and all still? So, yeah, let's just kind of bring it in a little bit. Yeah. It's like going, yeah, there, ah. Oh. All right, now, let's try patience this time. <laughs> of course, we're also running slower. Awesome positioning. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely an issue there. If we jump over and take a look in the uh, scene, get a, a perspective on how things are laid out. Well, my position was based off of the other numbers, too. So I'm at the outside edge. Yep, that's true. So my character, if I want to be safe, let's go, because now I'm using a patch of 32. So let's go 3 times 32. Let's go, should be able to do 48 by 48. That should put me in the center of the first patch. Or thereabouts. There. All right, now I'm also not randomizing the patches, so we're repeating the numbers each time. Right. So, and these patches are fairly small just to save on time. And you can see there's no seaming, but we can run up here, jump over onto the next patch. Turn around and, and look back. Yep. So now, go ahead real quick, if you don't mind, and jump over to scene view. And now just kind of, yeah, back away, and there you go. And so you can, here's yeah, a patch. Very nice. Another patch, another patch, another patch. And this isn't really limited. I mean, we can keep on going. If we go over here, look at our stats. Draw calls, 10, 9, 10. So 
and that's with nine. So if we were to come over, uh, oh, I fell to my death. So dead. But let's see, because it's a nine by nine. If we were doing this for a mobile platform, this is well within its capabilities. Well, as if far you as add draw some costs. some fog in, and um, I mean, yeah, I'm just ten, eleven draw costs. I'm just trying to find a place where I can get to that center patch mm -hmm. without falling to my death. <laughs> so, and get to about the center. Now, this is not very big patches, but this also meets the requirements we were talking about before. If we were having a, this as a tool where multiple people were um, sending stuff back and forth, a 32 by 32 um, grid, mm -hmm. we are fully capable of sending all that information back and forth through Photon in a single packet. So we, we could have so multiple people. having to fragment our messages. Right, and get stuff very fast. But if you look at it, yeah, there's some anomalies because of well, all Well, there's of no the, stitching uh, going no on, stitching. so when we get out to the edges, the way that... Uh, Right, but if I come in here and go to, let's say, render settings, I turn on my fog. Let's go ahead and pick a color that makes sense. And let's say 0 0.015. I think that's too heavy, 2.5. So I faded off to the outside edges, mm -hmm. almost gone. This is huge for, say, an iPhone or an Android world. Right, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, it might not be a bad idea to... Go ahead and and just get a build of this at some point soon over on the um, over on the Mac and deploy it to the so iPad and the and the iPhone and just see how it feels. But um, but anyways, we are honestly out of time, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Please understand the way these videos are being shot. You know, just the the more relaxed, matter of fact style. Um, allows us to do things like, ooh, we're almost out of time, but let's just jump in and throw just a few more minutes at them because this would be really cool. And, oh, look at you going all beautiful and all. <laughs> so, anyways, again, uh, we'll proceed a little bit further this week with uh, Lee taking a look at stitching and, and getting stitching in place. And then there's all sorts of places where we can branch out because, you know, as far as the terrain goes, this actually is a, a very, it's, it's just a very deep, subject matter right. for where we're going with the MMO. Right. And one of the things that I have to look at is there is a very obvious disadvantage to this. That being that we no longer can bake out light maps for this yeah. in a tr traditional sense. This is true. So that gives us our number one issue that we have to deal with. And the other issue that we get with this is just the fact that we can not take advantage of the texture painting tools that you get with the built-in terrain system. So we'd have to make some of our own. So I'm <laughs> going to have to experiment with writing our own custom shaders and being able to paint terrains inside of Unity. I'm sure we've got some students out there to be interested in seeing that. And especially when we sit there and network it. So you've got multiple people painting not only height map information, yeah. but texturing parts of the world all in real time. Absolutely. Okay, well, that's going to wrap up this R&D session for today. And I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. And we hope that some of you guys got something out of this. Very cool stuff, though. And Lee will just simply continue on from here. But that does conclude the video. Again, thanks a lot, everyone.